In this video, we're going to focus on creating our arrow with text here at the bottom. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's continue on here and let's start to put in the arrow here. So to do this, we're going to scroll down here and go to look for what we call the today line, basically the plugin we started with. And what we're going to do here now is start to draw a new shape and that shape would be a tiny arrow. So to do this, we're going to say here ctx.begin path, which basically means again, it will create a new shape independent of anything else. So once we have this, we'll be drawing it first with lines and then we'll fill up the shape inside. So we're going to say this line will be ctx.line width of one pixel. We have here three pixels, but we have here also one pixel now because we need to overwrite this. And what we could do here is maybe ctx.restore. But doing that will uh, also restore this color here to, to the default, which is when it's on save, that's basically no color. So then we have to specify this as well. So we're going to say here for the line, we're going to grab this color here as well. So now we have this, we need to start drawing and our drawing would start somewhere in, the, in this corner, for example, and then we go to the right side and then we go down and then we go up again. So how do we do this? Well, we have to really work with the coordinates. Luckily, it's quite easy. And uh, what we could do even maybe our, as our starting point would be this point then going there and there and then down. That's maybe easier. So we're going to get this starting point here. So how do you get the starting point? Well, we already know the starting point. That's basically this one here. So we could just grab this entire code. So here, ctx.move to, which is the starting point, And then we have this here. So once we did that, we need to make now another one, ctx.line to, and line needs to be spelled correctly. And what we want to do is we want to do two things. We're going to grab all of this, put it in there, but now we have to really think carefully what we want to do. Because if we are here and we want to go to this position here, basically we need to go up and then we go to the left. All right. To do this, going up, we know that it's minus X amount of pixels. So if we're going to say here for the X amount of pixels, we're going to say minus six pixels, meaning we're going six pixels up. Then what I want to do is I want to go up and then I want to go to the right, let's say three pixels here. If I go three pixels here, other side should also be three pixels. So from the center, going three pixels there. How do we do this? Well, the X here indicates how many pixels to the right we need to go. And the starting point would be the chart area, of course. So now we are here and we want to go to the left back. From this point, we're going to the left is minus. While going, while increasing the amount, we go to the right side. So it, in the first pl place, it calculates where this position is. So from this point, how many pixels it needs to go to the right side. And then we have to calculate or deduct a few pixels. So we go to the left. By doing that, you have to make sure that we're outside of this function here or this calculation here. We're going to say here minus three. So just outside there. And then we do this deduction of three. Once we did that, we can maybe say ctx stroke to draw the item so we can see a visual. There we are. So you can see here we have something and I do feel like minus three is quite small. Let's do six. Save. There we are. All right. So it's still tough to see. Don't worry. Later on, we're going to make it easier. So the next thing what we need to do, and that's luckily easier, we're going to copy this, put that in here. And all we do here now is to say plus. And this we just maintain same position because basically now I only need to go because we already went up and then to the right side. Now I don't have to go up anymore because that same position I want to maintain, but I only want to go to the right side. Sorry, I just said right side as well. I mean, go to the left side and now we have to go to the right side. So if I do this, say, there you are. And now this is the easiest part. This one here, we don't have to calculate and make another line. No. All we can do here is we just say this begin path and then what we're doing here is make sure that it's under here before we do the stroke yes we're going to say here ctx at close path why before and not after because we need to close the path and then it will draw if you draw first and afterwards close the path it's the shape has already been drawn and it cannot draw the closing part 
very important so the order matters so once you see this you can see here it starts to work of course this is just uh, quite tough to read if I do maybe three pixels maybe that would be even better there you are however let's fill up the filler inside let's put this on one first but then we're going to fill up inside so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this enter here but then I'll say instead of the stroke style I'll say here fill style I save that still nothing happens but then I'm going to say here enter ctx dot fill save refresh all right so there we are we have now the shape but if you look very very carefully but it's quite tough to see you will see that maybe we should go a bit more down so it connects to this dotted line here to do this it makes sense just to say here um and this one here the top we don't want to start at the top line which is basically this part but just a little bit down more so we're just going to say here plus uh let's say three pixels save refresh and then as you can see it goes a little bit more down and it just merge more nicely with the dotted line here that looks absolutely phenomenal all right so now we have this and maybe you might say well could you put in here the text today i'm thinking should we do it yes or no it might be redundant but i'm thinking uh for a first time reader that might be very useful to understand what this dotted line means so what we're going to do is we're going to just add up the final item here is just a simple text for the ctx um font equals we can make this bold, I guess we can say bold 12 pixels sans serif. Let me say here ctx dot, uh, I guess the fill style, this is all same, so it will probably get it here from the restore. Um, well, oh, sorry, this one is not being restored, because this is not restored, it doesn't reset it. But if I do that here, I need to specify that again. Although it's a good habit to have it to restore it. And then here I'll say here the fill style. I'm going to grab this. Just grab this color, put it in here. That will be my font color. And then I'm going to say here ctx.fill text to draw, to write the text. And of course, three values, text, text, x, and y. Luckily, we know most of it. Basically, we want to be here down. So we can say here, first of all, for the y, it will be easy. We just say bottom because we have it here in the chart area already. And then what I want to do is we want to have the position here, which is just, I guess, this point. Uh, let's get this entire item here. Copy this. Then I put that in there because this is the date. So if I put in here, let's say make this a string value and we can say, right, it should be today, save, refresh. As you can see here, it is positioned well, but there are some minor uh, items that we need to fix a bit more i want to push it a bit more down and luckily that will be quite easy and next i want to put it in the center so what we're going to do here first of all enter we're going to say ctx dot text align equals center by default is set on left save this refresh now it's in the center let's push it down a bit more so we say bottom and then we just add up additional pixels on the bottom we know the font is about 12 pixels so if i do 12 maybe we're just all right and you can see here we have a slight challenge what it is is it clips off because the bottom has no padding so what i want to do is i want to add up some padding here at the bottom and then it should work nicely so we're going to scroll down go to our layout in the options put a comma here and we can just say here um, bottom and let's put in here maybe uh, 15 pixels i guess that should be more than enough uh acceptable maybe 20 let's see there we are i think that's much better and then we just make sure we push this a little bit more down so what we're going to do here uh let's see where are we it's on the today line and the today line we can push this maybe 15 pixels down there we are and you can see we're not being clipped off on the fonts so this is very acceptable all right and that's basically how we can do this and of course you could do so much more you could put a color around it or give it a color anything you want but i will skip that for now and almost before i want to stop i just realized something here horrible and you can see here the names are being uh, clipped off again and the reason why of course is the restore we need to make sure that we restore this as well 
very bad i didn't notice that but if i restore that all right interesting um text align center begin path restore uh, uh let's see what happened here how come i didn't notice this was this previously as well is that because of my font here this is center if i remove this and say all right interesting so somehow this here is this is the line today we have the names and somehow the names here are being impacted by it all right Be that's not a real big issue if we can do here we just copy this and later on we put this on left and we're going to look at the names here so we have the status and let's go at the names the assigned task and then we have here text baseline and i guess uh, assigned task should have this put this on left so we force this left save restore there we are so everything else works nicely all right so basically this is how to do that and uh i guess what would be uh, very interesting as well is to have maybe a drop down if we would have a longer month or more longer period that we could filter and have it on a monthly basis that we can drop down and select october november etc etc that will be for the next video